Hello, this is Gene again. Um, I decided to do another video today. I've had a couple beers, so I feel loose about talking about stuff. <clears throat> I'm not going to go down what I did in the other video uh, at all. I don't think. Hopefully not. But I did want to talk about uh, our society right now, how it's more matriarchal than ever. And I've always believed this, especially since the feminist movement, uh, third wave uh, feminist has uh, taken over the discussion basically that in 2008 when obama was elected somehow he was uh, indoctrinated or um run or uh i don't know what the word is uh what's the word he was puppeted by them and uh while it was already there he made it worse 10 times worse than it is uh so as I said, I, I want to talk about this subject, and the, probably the best person that talks about it right now is Jason Whitlock on his Fearless uh, show. He always talks from a, a biblical, biblical perspective, and I appreciate that because this country, for whatever you think about it, was, is, raised, founded on Christian values. It's not Judeo-Christian, it's Christian, okay? And there's way too many people that like to put those two words together. And I guess I should hit myself, because I said I wasn't going to talk about the Jews. So I'm not going to talk about the Jews here when it comes to that. They've co-opted that whole thing. Uh, the United States, even though in our founding, founding documents, we said that there's no religion that the state is going to be about, right? But this country was clearly, clearly founded on Christian uh, values. So he talks about that. He talks about that we are called as men to lead. Uh, you don't have to call it patriarchy because this is where we get the whole, and I, this is this this whole talk is going to be about not that as well as well with the Barbie movie, how they push this thing now that the matriarchal, matriarchal type society is always the best. You see that in the movie, and that eventually at the end of the movie, after Ken has actually instilled a patriarchy back in Barbara land, uh, they get it back and, uh, and matriarchy is the way to go and there's no way to have any uh, equal rights at all. It's still at the end of the movie. Uh, Ken is subservient, simping to Barbie. And this is what we see right in our society right now that men, way too many men are simping to women. Whether it's they're doing it online and giving these women money by just... <laughs> I mean, they just have them to do something online and they give them money, $10, $10 for them to do something stupid. These women are making thousands and thousands, maybe millions of dollars just being getting money from simping men. So he talks about this and apparently everything that we have right now, he always puts in that, in that um, areas. He won't go where I want to go, although he's actually... As day goes, as the days go on, he's understanding who actually runs everything. And I said, I'm not going to do about that. But he's he's talking about it. Uh, feminism, uh, Marxism, that's all. It's all under the same umbrella, and it's all founded by the same people, and how they in fact impact the Western culture uh, by putting men or put women at at the top and have men being subservient to women when men don't have that in their makeup. We're supposed to be leaders, we're supposed to be providers, we're supposed to be protectors. We're not supposed to be somebody that's supposed to, and I do this, I've been doing this the last 10 years since I had my stroke, well, a little longer than that, that I don't go out, I don't work. And fortunately for me, I had a retirement from the military and I have disability from VA and I got my social security earlier because of my, my disability. I don't have the ability to sit and do what I did before, all right? And I don't wanna be, oh, uh, woe is me, but as I was, a, um, I don't know what you call it. Uh, I wasn't an engineer because I didn't have the math for it, but I was a, system, a systems engineer where I wrote manuals and stuff. And what I did in the military, I did something differently was a top secret, which I can't really talk about so much, but I did stuff, right? I had responsibilities, um, you know, I had the people underneath me. Uh, but 
be able to my mind for my mind and how it works in the United States for those who don't know if the job that you have if you can't do it anymore and it's not your fault you had a disability because of it me I had a massive stroke when I was 45 I think it was and I'm 58 now is that right yeah and it messed up that part of where I can look at words it interpret it what numbers uh, how I look at them, how you could uh, get that together rationally. Now, can I, can I possibly sit like a, can I do a, a wall a, mo, a Walmart greer, greeter for two or three hours a day? I probably could. Um, I mean, at that point, I've already worked thirty years, uh, at least thirty years. So I had to go through all of this stuff, and it's not really it's kind of out of the park. But I'm gonna I'm gonna just say what I'm gonna say. I had to talk. You know, I had to go through all the hoops because what happened is I had, um, I worked for Harris, which is a big contractor in the United States. And also uh, green door, back black door, I was doing stuff that I don't necessarily agree with, but I was doing it because it gave me, it, it allowed me to provide for my family. It gave us a better uh, life, um, allowed my wife to stay at home for the most part, because we had a disabled son and she did that for a long time and then she went back to work. My wife is un incredible. Uh, if she had stayed in the military, she'd have been the chief, no doubt. If she wanted to be an officer, she would have been a general at some point. Very, very, uh, I found it. I was very lucky to find her. Um, she's hard to deal with because she is that way, but I respect her and she respects me. And that's all that really matters when it comes to uh, marriage. But what happens is when this happens, when you work in corporate and something happens to you, and for the first three months or th two or three months, they're gonna pay you, they're gonna pay you like a long-term disability. At some point, they don't wanna pay that anymore. They, because at, at the very beginning of it, I was getting a, like 70% of my pay. So I was making, I was making 75,000 a year. And this is, you know, this is 13 years ago. I went in Florida, the normal houses were like $200,000. So, I was doing okay, and plus I had my military uh, retirement. I also was having some disability from what happened to me when I was in the military. I, I fucked up my back. Um, I can't really do anything, really, physically anymore. I do what I can. I can walk, stuff like that, to keep myself in shape. Um, so I have that as well. So, I mean, I'm getting 50000 a year from that. And, you know, people can say what they want to say about it. So I was doing that, and I was also getting 65, 70, or excuse me, 70, so I was making decent money. So we got to do what we want to do. And then I, I had a had a point in my life where my, I mean, my back was really, really hurting me. So I went and got some shots for my back, and uh, they let me out. I was off on short-term disability for a little bit. It's like 30 days, 45 days, because I couldn't sit at my back jet, uh, desk desk I couldn't do what I need to do it was just so I mean you can't you can't be at work and taking uh, opiates and stuff like that when you're trying to be rational when you're doing your job so I'm doing this and uh, it's like two or three days before I was supposed to go back I went to Subway this is when I was really fat too I was probably the worst shape in my life and this happens all the time uh, if you look at the statistics when people get out of the military if you've been in the military for 20 years let's say it's like another five years like, I don't know, it's like 30% of people die. Or it's like when you're a college coach and you're 70 years old and you stop coaching and then they find out two, uh, two, uh, two years later that the guy dies because there's no value, there's no goals, there's no anything. This is how men work. So this is all, this is all gonna come back to, to matriarchal and I'm gonna get there. So I'm sitting there and I'm probably about 240 at that point, maybe 237. I was probably 20 pounds more than I did at the worst in the military. And I was feeling it, you know. I mean, I could felt that I was I was just too big. I'm a 6'2", 6'3", but still too big, you know. I don't have the body to really, I mean, I'm, I probably should run about 180, you know. So anyway, so I'm sitting at home, and I was talking to my daughter, uh, Miranda, who I don't see much. That's another video. But anyway, I was talking to her. And uh, it was what's weird is because, uh, well, I'll, I'll just go what happened. I was talking, I said, I don't feel well. This just didn't feel well. So I got up to like turn off the TV. I was gonna go do something upstairs, maybe go to sleep or something. And I just, 
I had a stroke, a big stroke, and woke up and half my side, I just couldn't, I couldn't even understand where I was. And somehow I got upstairs, I don't know how, and they found me and whatever. And uh, I mean, half of my brain is, you could see it. I mean, it's still, in, now if I go and do an MRI, you can see that's just this big thing. And it, it, it really impacted my speech areas, my rational, laxal areas of the brain, how you deal with looking at numbers. It's almost like I'm all of a sudden, the next day, or at that moment, I become dyslexic, dys dyslexic. I couldn't put things together. So what happens at this point, they, I say two or three years, or I'm saying two months, and they're like, okay, they don't want to pay this anymore. So they know what, when you sign up for all this stuff, they know that you'll, you'll probably get Social Security, and that, that means they'll pay less than they have to do, and they push this, and you have to go everything done. They come and see you and see whether or not you can actually do another job, and they do all this stuff. They have people come to your house and to determine whether you're basically disabled. And I go through all that, and they continually... Uh, reject me, reject me, reject me. So I keep going to the next thing, and you've met, you've, at, at the end, you have to go to see a, a judge. This is for COVID, of course, but it was the same thing. I had to go someplace and see a judge, like a Zoom call. And I had a actually had a um, lawyer that was with me with that Harris paid for because they they didn't want to pay that that four thousand dollars a month anymore. You know, they wanted to they want the, the federal government to pay for it, and that's what happened. At the end of the day, the uh, the judge says clearly, you know, you've paid more than enough into uh, with your taxes, so you you deserve to get uh, your Social Security. It should not be an issue. He said uh, you've done enough, more than enough to serve the country and all this stuff. And he said, looking at this stuff, I said M maybe you could work, but it would never be similar to what you did before. And, and it's not fair to you to, you know, have a, a minimum wage job, whatever. And it was she, the person was nice. Uh, and, and so, so that happened. And for the last 13 years or 12 years, I've been getting a, a paycheck from the government and also a paycheck from from Harris. And I was only at Harris for, I don't even know. It happened, it was been three years. It was three years that this happened. And it's something you should always do and always will tell to somebody who ever gets a job that you have the ability to uh, get long-term disability because it's like it's usually two hundred dollars or twenty dollars or excuse me two dollars a month if i decided i didn't want to pay two dollars i would never have this now so this is what happened so that happened so i've lost a little bit of what i my earning potential my wife went back to work uh things happened we're here in alabama now we're doing well financially she's worked for somebody that she doesn't have to get paid a whole lot of money but she likes her job she actually has influence with young kids, and that's what she wants to do. So when I talk about uh, patriarchy or matriarchy and seeing what uh, the West has gone through when it comes to this, when we've elevated single mothers, that we said that women have no accountability when it comes to abortion, that we just say, we don't, it's one of those things like in 1919, we said, you know what, fuck it. You're going to you're gonna con continually complain on having the vote even though that most women didn't want the vote because they understand they, they understand it without the internet they knew back then that if you had the vote that means you had you were you could be sub subscribed to the, the government and, and fight, uh, fight the wars this just happened after world war one when the men had to do this stuff and women still don't do it till today i mean where are the feminists when it comes to that they're not around so this all started about this and then the, the different phases of feminism started and that's all based on class and power and pre prejudice and gender and all and it's all marxist bullshit that everybody knew about <laughs> before world war ii that this shit was going on and be like we gotta stop this stuff and we allowed the shit to fester especially in our academia and stuff so what we have now and what he talked about with uh ice cube was talking about that he can't talk right anymore. And this is the guy that was champion saying stupid stuff about cops and women and being his hoes and all that shit. That that, that hip top head hip hop kind of like garnered in the modern woman. That they have no accountability, they can have sex with anybody, they can have abortions, whatever they wanted. And <clears throat> there was no black people in uh, uh, fathers in the homes, and it's now endemic everywhere. But it was we kind of like even though with Obama got in, 
and he let the matriarchy start taking over and feminism and all that stuff taking over. For years now, we've debunked the, gay, the may, uh, pay gap, uh, all this other stuff, and now it's, it's coming back. And what really is, is, is upsetting when you see a, a movie like Barbie, Barbie Land or Barbie, and it shows this again. It's saying that women are somewhere superior to men that they should be always be looked at and men should be subservient to, to women. That's not God's plan. Right, it's, I'm 15 minutes in and I'm finally getting to the point that it is. That's not God's plan. Now you can say that God and its, his construct is patriarchal or whatever you want to say, but it's not how most women want it. It's just not. Uh, most women want men. I'm going to say most. I'm saying 99% want men to provide and protect them to always be there to make sure that nothing happens to them, to take care of the family. It's just what we're supposed to do. It's something that we in, innately know. Um, regardless of what happens, whatever the modern uh, ph ph uh, philosophy is, we know deep down that's what our role is. And when we see something like this, and, and then we're like, oh, why, why is Tommy Laren and, and why is Jenner Al Allison, they're all like, I don't understand why people are upset about the Gar the Barbie movie. And I'm like, let me do a Google search. Mm, Tommy, no kids. Uh, Jenna, 38, no kids. Uh, why would you want to send your daughter, who's eight years old, to see that movie that just shames men? That means anybody that they know that they're male, they're going to shame. They're going to look at everybody that, um, it's just the movie. It's just the movie. It's it's like, what? it's one of those things. And uh do you want your brother? I mean, that. Let's say you have a five or eighteen-year-old girl. Eighteen, excuse me, eight-year-old girl. You and her go to Barbie Land. They think it's a little funny to just put 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 man down, and now she she goes home and and shows those same characteristics to her brother who's six, and then after about, you know, two or three weeks of that, uh, as a mom, are you going to stop it? Are you going to say that's not fair, or are you going to just say, oh well, Barbie said to do that? I mean. This idea that we're not, influ we're not influenced by Hollywood or what they put out is stupid. And people know this. We've noticed the prop propaganda war that was done during World War II or World War I or during Iraq. It's all visual. And men are very uh, immune to that or have issues with our, but so do men, or women, because women are very much more agreeable than men are. You know, remember, was it 10 years ago, 15, or whatever? And all those women that were sitting at the train station in Germany when all these migrants walked in, and like, let me do this, let me hug you, and then, you know, a, week, a year later, there all these rapes are going on, and then still they're thinking it's fine, and the entire Europe is being taken over by this, and they're like, where are the good men? <laughs> where are the good men? Uh, the society has changed so much that guys don't know how to really to re react to it because, at our core were rational and logical. Now, obviously on both sides of it, we have very moronic people, we have very dangerous people, and those people need to be taken care of. But for the most part, men know what the role is supposed to be. And when they continually say that it's their fault for everything, at some point they're going to pat, they're going to, they're going to go what we do. And it wasn't that long ago, probably 20 years ago, 25 years ago, maybe even 30 at this point, when that uh, book came out, men are from um, Mars and women are from by Venus or something like that, or the other way around. And it shows how men go into their caves when their sh shit happens. So at, 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 a, at the very highest stemic, stemic level that you say shit about men, what do you think they're going to do? This is what we do. Some of us will, will fight the power and do something about it, but we're not going to do it until enough, enough of us do anything about it. So it's very nice to see a former rapper who probably started a lot of this stuff, didn't realize what he was doing. He's just trying to make money, trying to get, get it to the man. <laughs> um, to see that they're out, that most of them are all conservative now, and they, they have these conversations with other conservatives. And because obviously they make all the money now, and they don't want the government to have all the money, but they realize that their voices can't, are not going to be heard anymore. And what Jason's talking about as how powerful as rap guys are and then what it does to the uh, masculinity of the black community. All we can hope is that guys like this will come out and talk about fathers. I mean, he's been married for 30 years. 
uh, that this should be something that should be out and be celebrated. It will make things so much better if we have fathers in the homes that we actually go back to, we'll never be patriarchal, but the point that most people understand that men are the leaders and this is how it's supposed to be. Women could clearly be in the boardroom and a lot of them can be leaders, but they don't, that's not their, that's not their fucking role. It's just not. There are gonna be some women, they're alpha females and they're, they're never gonna have kids and all that bullshit, but that's not your role. Your role is to find a man, have a decent relationship with that man and have babies. That's why you're here. At the very, at the late, the low areas, that's where you're supposed to be. Before I leave, I do want to talk about one more thing. My son actually sent me, not my disabled son, although some areas it kind of is. No, I'm just playing. Uh, he, I guess Destiny had a, um, I don't know who you know Destiny is. He's a left, uh, left liberal who gets destroyed more than he wins. Uh, and he's a cuck too because he allows people, his wife, to have sex with. But somehow, I guess he has sex as well. But I mean, he's not a man. I'm sorry. We can have he can have we can have a debate with him if we put that off to the side. But I would always not respect him for that. So he had a debate with a pro-life person, and it's just funny how I mean, they, they they continually change the goalposts when it comes to abortion. It's like. I simply said this because Destiny is okay with it. And he's like, because they're not really sentient beings, so they don't feel anything. Oh, that's all bullshit. It's like they always change the goalpost when science doesn't really agree with them. We know at a conception there's a different uh, DNA strand, so we know that's life. We know. And every other place in, sci in science that if there's a single sor source uh, cell that starts, we call it life. If we find a single cell on Mars, we're gonna call it life. Um, but because when we're talking about humans, it's not really life because, you know, conscious and all that whole bullshit. Like we can have this uh, psychological or physiological, whatever debate on it, but it's still a new life. And it's just continually bullshit about it. But meanwhile, that is not what the issue is. That's just a, dis that's like a distract distraction of what it is. Because we live in this matriarchal society, we've allowed women have no accountability when it comes to this. They use abortion as their birth control. Uh, all the stats uh, will say that if a person has abortion, they're more likely to have another one. And if you have two, you might have three or four or five. And that's why. why I mean, nobody allows, no one holds them accountable. I'm not talking about putting them into prison because they have a mixed carriage. What I'm talking about is that men need to own what their role is, and that's lead. And if, if you get somebody pregnant because you're stupid, you don't have a common, you don't ask her to have birth control, then you have the ability, you need to stay, I'm gonna stay in there, we're gonna take care of the baby, we're gonna do whatever we have to do, we're not gonna kill it because we may, we not have sex. And he's like, but here we go. And I'm like having this conversation with him, and he's like, yeah, I agree with you. And I'll, but what about the 1% that have this and rape, uh, rape and stuff? Let's say, it's, first of all, it's not 1%. I would love to have, I will have a conversation, uh, actual comp compromise with that. But we don't tell these women, we don't say, look, you've been raped, report it. If you have to be pregnant from that rape, we'll give you a certain amount of time to decide what you want to do with it. And if you decide after uh, 30 days that you don't want to have it, we're not going to say, no, you can't have an abortion or you can't have... Uh, another type of pill that will expel the fetus. I think 99% of the people would be okay with that. People, the hardliners on the right or the pro-life might not be, but I get it. You shouldn't really have to carry a, a into per, to term about somebody that you've been raped by, but we need to, they need to actually report it because I always hear this. Well, it's, it's not really reported that much. We don't really know how much rape actually happens. So we don't know how many women have got pregnant by rape and I'm like, and then we have to understand what rape actually means because you can't now take consent away. I mean, this woman was talking to uh, Michael Knowles about, uh, I have no consent to have the baby. So she had consensual sex. She didn't have any protection on either side. She got pregnant, but she, she wants to get rid of the baby because there's no consent to have the baby inside of her. I mean, they continually change and Move the goalpost when it comes to abortion. When the, we all know scientifically, once conception happens, 
it's a new form it's a new life form we all know this in every other part of science we know this but when it comes to humans because we're different we, 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 can't, we can't have that conversation because we're so worried about saying that women need to be accountable so when i say we don't live in a patriarchy for fuck's sake we live in a huge micro matriarchy and it's destroying everything we know in the west and it's it's infecting everything because to her, women are way agree agreeable until it, it it actually impacts them it's like the women that are complaining to congress that Lee, Leah T Thomas, who's a six point six point or six foot four male, still intact, is putting his shit on with women in the room, and they're like, it's so, it's offensive, and it's it's uncomfortable. And I'm like, where were they on all the other things that they've had that have been pro woman, pro men, whatever? They've not been anywhere until it's actually invaded their own spaces. They want to complain about it. Now, I'm with it with them. But I agree with them. But where have you been? Where have you been to say this? Wake the fuck up. Shit's happening and you just want it to wait till it, you don't want to say shit till it comes for you. I mean, that whole thing. Eventually it comes for you and eventually it will. Eventually it will invade your space. You won't like it. You'll complain. And guess what? The only people that actually get any claim is the women. They continually complain like they did in 1919. They got the right to vote. They changed everything in this country, whether it's good or bad, but I can tell you, we don't know what would have happened if we'd have all really conservative people. Maybe we would have went to war more and more times. I don't know. But they, they, they do this, and they, they're not very good. They don't. <laughs> There's a reason why God made us the way it is. Women are supposed to there to support, comfort, keep, keep the house up, uh, raise babies, be a, a, empathetic, um, be the communicators around, um, Men are supposed to lead, provide, protect. This is what we're good at. This is what God gave us to do. I don't care who, whether it's Allah or it's Jehovah or it's uh, Jesus or, you know, the Father. They're all basically saying the same thing. All that Mino, uh, Thetis, uh, one God religions believe this. So in the West, we've just, we've just, <laughs> we give them no accountability and they just take it because this is something that's part of them. Their hypergamy, uh, uh, that women will marry a man. If something happens with that man, he doesn't provide as much or something like that. They'll start looking for somebody else that's more when it comes to providing. They will always um, trade up. It's rare that women ever trade down. They always financially try to trade up. This is something that kind of what they are. <laughs> so, and yet they have no accountability at all because the government the, the, the jobs the law is always on their side um, i mean some things are changed a little bit but there are a lot of states that still have uh alimony for life so you married somebody else but yet the guy that you were married before that you didn't want anymore because he didn't give you as much he still has to pay for you for life i mean yeah, come on it's it, it gets to that point where like something has to happen maybe it won't uh it you know of course men are not perfect obviously we make wrong decisions and all that stuff. We have to have a nice to have a strong woman behind us, but that's men don't, men don't necessarily need that. <laughs> I mean, it's like, you have to have, no, no. Pen, men want peace. P man wants to know that his family's taken care of and he wants to know what, what, what he does is gonna do enough that'll take care of him. And my dog is talking, so I'm gonna go ahead and stop right now. But let me know what you think in the comments below. And we'll talk about it there as well. Am I a misogynist? Because I believe that sometimes a patriarchy overall is better than a matriarchy. Just let me know in the comments and we'll talk about it there. Have a good day.